Hello and welcome to the Game Chamber. Something a bit different today. This one's quite exciting. Me and Tim have been looking forward to getting our hands on this one for a little while now. Uh, Game Master in Search of Adventure by Army Painter. This is kind of like a one-stop shop, everything you need in the box forever, for life, basically. Uh, this is for building terrain for your uh, tabletop RPG games, war games, whatever you want to do. Uh, and the idea is it's everything you need to get started to build some really cool dungeon tiles, scenery, all that sort of stuff. Thank you so much to Army Painter for letting us get hold of this a uh, little early. These are due out mid to late February. We're not putting exact dates on them yet because, you know, the world's still on its ass, so who knows when we actually get them, but hopefully getting these in around February. We're gonna open it up, we're gonna see what's inside. We're gonna let you know whether this is good value because there's a lot of stuff in here as to whether or not it's cheaper to buy it all separately. I imagine it's going to be cheaper to buy the box because it's a pretty good price point. This retails at uh, 99 USD, around 120 Canadian, and you get all this. Oh, we'll do a better look as we open it up. Come on, let's crack it open. See what we get. I love the old school art style, by the way. It reminds me of like, um, like an early talisman or something, or like an Iron Maiden album cover or something, I love that. I hope that's a conscious choice and they're not just, you know, a bit far behind. Uh, how to build Dungeons and Counts. So we get a book teaching us, is it actual builds or is yep. it more of a it's sort of style cool. guide? Oh yeah, yep. it's showing you tiles. And we're gonna follow this exactly and see if we can... Are we? Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't wanna, oh. I don't wanna put any of my own, Come yeah. On. We're gonna see if we can replicate what's on the box cover, okay. You get some nice, uh, is that just packing I think? Yeah, nice, okay. <laughs> you gotta be careful though, because some of this looks like packing. This all looks like this is styrofoam, so this is what you're gonna be using for your, uh, for your base structures. I think you get six smaller sheets and two larger sheets as well. So I'm guessing they're the six small ones. Um, okay, I'm coming a little, little damaged, but I mean, we're kind of gonna do a lot of that to it anyway, right? So. Maybe it's okay. Uh, some sandpaper. And then here comes your tool. So there's a paint palette. Um, is it three paintbrushes you get? It I is think? three paintbrushes, yeah. yeah. So we may, we may need to go and grab another paintbrush or two, just because there's two of us working on this today. But you get a, um, couple, a couple of decent sized brushes, obviously scenery focused, so slightly wider. Uh, brushes. They are. Are they just army painted ones, or are they branded up? They are army painted. They actually are branded to the set. Game yeah. Master, That's large, neat. medium. I would say maybe a bit less quality than the standard army painter. But yeah. We're just painting scenery here, right? So. Yeah. Scenery brushes don't need to be anything too special, honestly. Yeah. Your old standard utility knife. Yeah. Standard. And there's a paint palette. Cool. Now we get into their own products. Here we go. So we got. What do we call this stuff? Scenery sand, so that's a nice coarse grit. It's quite, yeah, it's just, I wouldn't really call that sand, honestly. It's more of a, yeah, more like a gravel almost. Looks nice though. Uh, we have the dungeon base color. Okay, so that's just a, a larger, oh, you're a little out of focus there, hold on. Okay, so that's just like a larger part of gray, basically. This is going to be 50 milliliters. Yeah, so. and I think there's another one of a different color. There you go. So there's also a cavern one, which is more of a sort of brownie. That probably it's not dried out. With a, with a lid off. <laughs> <laughs> like a brownie gray. Uh, some tufts. Those look like, you know, wasteland or whatever tufts. They're, yeah. They call them dungeon tufts, but... They are called dungeon tufts, but they're pretty sure it's just their standard tufts just without the packaging in them. Yeah. Um, which is fine, I always throw that sort of stuff away anyway. Uh, here's, one of the, here's one of the cool bits, this is a hot wire cutter. Oh, <laughs> sorry. We get to go out and buy batteries. Oh nice, yeah. some big old batteries for this. So these things are pretty crazy, basically you, you throw some batteries in and it just makes a simple circuit and the wire heats up. Uh, they're, they're, they're a bit funky, I, I think they're, they're, but you know, they do what they do. Um, that's gonna be your button. Right? And there's actually a switch there to sort of turn it on and off, but wow, yeah. <laughs> and basically it makes the makes cutting the styrofoam easier using a, a hot wire. Um, you can get these handheld ones, you can also get more like table-based ones um, that you sort of run it through like you would run wood through a, um, you know, a, a, a woodcutter sort of thing. I will say in their defense, this is the first like hobby industry channel 
styrofoam cutter. Yeah. Um, the other ones are all going to be, you know, special order. Yeah, yeah. This stuff. is the first one you're going to be able to pick up easily from your hobby store, and it's battery as well, which is nice. Some of them come with like uh, plug-in ones, right? You're welcome. Yeah. And then we've got foam glue. Cool. Foam okay. Sculpting glue. And we imagine that's just PVA. Um, sometimes it can be a little different. Okay. Uh, sometimes PVA won't set inside okay. the foam. Um, okay. And I think these are going to be just renamed. Just regular Army Painter ones, but... But they are full size. Uh-huh, which is nice. And just kind of a focus towards terrain, so lots of greys and browns, right? Black, and they yeah. call them things like Cavern Rock and things like that, really, whereas they're, they're mostly just sort of bases and greys, yeah? Yeah, so nice I, can't, I can't tell you if they're different colours than what they've already got. Yeah. But, but they're definitely different names. Yeah, Grotto Slime is new. So here's an interesting one. I wonder if this is because it's an early access look at this. But that should be a tin of um, uh, spray primer. <laughs> so I wonder if that's a, a placeholder for people like us who are getting an early copy of this. I can't imagine that's going to work. But yeah, there should be a tin of uh, there should be a can of spray in there as well. It's it's also going to be because of international shipping. Uh, that may be a thing as well. Air shipping. But um, yeah, but that's interesting because in my experience, spray cans and this stuff don't mix very well. <laughs> Um, the spray can often melt this stuff if you don't use it right, so I, I'm quite interested that they put that in there, honestly. You can get foam safe spray. Oh right, do you think this will be foam safe spray? We'll find out, I guess. <laughs> uh, and a rule. Oh, branded in there. Oh, nice one. oh look at that, everything's branded, cool. Ooh. So yeah, it looks like a nice little set, Are we, and we're going to work through and try and make some dungeon tiles, eh? Yep. Let's, let's, uh... See how Are we going to do caverns or dungeons? Or one of us doing caverns and one of us doing dungeons? That sounds like a good plan. Okay. Oh, we have to supply your own brick. Oh my god. <laughs> we need bricks and batteries. Let's go. We started out by cutting the styrofoam into one inch grid squares. I went for a classic grey dungeon and Tim went for more of a brownie grey cavern. These are the two sort of styles that this original set comes with. This is pretty boring to watch so while we get on with that I'm going to run through the cost of everything individually and we'll see whether or not this works out to be a good deal. Some of the stuff I can get direct prices for as they are products that Army Painters sell individually already. Other things I've kind of had to judge and guess based on things we sell here at the game chamber but overall I've been relatively lenient with prices and all this should probably be taken with a bit of a pinch of salt. The pack comes with seven regular paints, 18 millimeter pots of paints. We're pretty sure these are genuine army painter paints they've just been rebranded for this set either way we sell these for four dollars 55 cents these prices are all canadian dollars by the way we're here in southern ontario canada uh, that comes to 31 dollars 85 cents now they also do two larger pots of paint 50 mil paints now these aren't really sold at the moment we don't know whether they're going to come out with these separately later on but based on the volume we're going to roughly price these as 15 dollars for the two the brushes you get are basically a large dry brush a medium dry brush and then like uh, war gaming brush I suppose looking at the army painter range specifically we sell these for $12.25, $10.99 and $9.99 respectively for dry brushing terrain you can get away with pretty cheap brushes honestly we actually really like the new army painter set that they came out with a little while ago the rounded brushes I'll put a link to those in the description but here I'm just basing these on the same kind of brushes they sell individually we actually ended up using a few more brushes as well for the base coating of the projects so bear in mind that really those three might not necessarily be enough the can of spray that we didn't get here but you will get if you purchase this kit uh, would cost 17.42 is what we sell that for uh, the glue again i don't think it's something they actually sell but we sell a similar part of pva style glue for terrain painting at 642. other stuff that we can actually price up the uh, the little tubs of uh, terrain grit or sand that army painters sell again this dungeon grit or whatever they call it isn't one they sell individually currently but all of those pots uh, for the other things the battlefield grass the, the different uh, the different stuff they do we sell all of those at 742. Uh, a pack of tufts is 9.99 the cutter and the foam these are both products that army painter are bringing out individually and they're both going to be around 22 dollars 22 dollars for the cutter and then 22 dollars for the pack of six smaller sheets two larger sheets of the uh, of the foam 
The last couple of things, the palette, the rule, the knife, arguably these could be picked up for a dollar each as a, as a dollar store. They're nothing really special as far as quality goes. Maybe a metal rule might cost you two or three dollars, but otherwise there's nothing really to write home about here. I'm not even pricing in the cost of the piece of sandpaper because you, you most likely have some in your house. If not, to buy a pack of sandpaper, a single sheet like that would cost cents. Adding all of that together, you come to $185.33 Canadian with this box retailing at $120 dollars you're making a saving of about 60 dollars if you wanted to buy all of this stuff specifically there's a few weird choices in this box as to what you get but i would argue that there's nothing completely useless here and for somebody who's never built terrain before or perhaps if you're looking for a gift for a kid this would be a really great step to get them started for a pretty good price the only things we had to add were a biro pen i would argue that maybe pencil would be better there because you could see the blue of the pen come through a little bit and we use rolled up tin foil instead of a brick but you know you, i'm not going to cost in the cost of a stone out of your garden or a piece of tin foil or aluminum foil whatever you want to call it out of your kitchen <laughs> After we'd gritted up some of our uh, areas, we got to painting them. Uh, you'll see they're all covered in a base coat of black here. We would have used the spray if we were provided with one, uh, but we kind of had to cheat here, so we quickly threw all these under the airbrush. Uh, the paints themselves went on really nice. That you know, Army Painter isn't a brand of paint I personally use much, uh, but it would it, consistency was pretty good. It went on pretty nicely. Uh, honestly, for terrain, I would usually stick to craft paints. You know, the sort of stuff you buy from Apple Barrel, Walmart, places like that. But it was nice to use some uh, proper paint on this. It all went on pretty nicely, and uh, and the actual process is pretty simple. It's a base coat, and then using um, the the lighter colours as a, a dry brush to bring them up. Each of the set here the cavern and the dungeon comes with through like a trio of colors basically you've got your darkest tone for the base and then it uh, it comes with like a middling tone and then a highlights that you could use very sparingly it also comes with a wash as well the wash is a weird one it's kind of like a gray it's like a greeny kind of wash really which looked pretty good on the caverns we tried it on the dungeons and it didn't really work too well uh, it wasn't until later we realized the uh, the book that it comes with actually just recommends you use the uh, the, the the wash on the dungeon set as more of a mold in smaller spots so um that's fair enough personally i think maybe the wash could have just been a big tub of black wash and would have been a bit, little bit more useful across the board but you know these uh, these little things aren't the sort of thing that i'm gonna get myself uh, upset about <laughs> There wasn't really much more to it. We used some of the tufts to uh, to finish off the space, and that was kind of it. Uh, the book comes with lots of different instructions and video links to uh, to show you how to do things like lava pools and doorways and spike traps using cocktail sticks or uh, toothpicks, things like that. Um, obviously, we weren't really covering those today, but um, they look like they could be pretty good. Uh, when we got this set, the the links didn't actually work. They don't go live until February, I think. But be interesting to see what they look like. So, we're all done. There you have it. How, how long have we spent on this? A few hours? About three hours, not including drying time, really. Went together really well. Yeah, I think it's a, a good little set. Uh, you can see we've we've used just under a third. We actually have two thirds left. I um, reckon you could easily fill this sort of six by three table. Easily. Um, with stuff, if you made it all up, we've just done a small set yeah. to show you off. We went easy on the tufts. There's yeah. plenty to do this whole set. Like we didn't even make a dent in the uh, in the grid that they give you. Yeah. So uh, paints. Some of the some of the volumes of the paints are a bit funny. I think a larger wash bottle would benefit. Definitely. Uh, the wash is pretty low, and also it's a it's a green wash, um, which I think has come out pretty well for the cavern stuff, but it's a bit a bit weird on the on the more sort of traditional dungeony stuff. Um, I think more of it. I think probably a black wash would have been a better option because you can just use that on everything. But Sanding is a step not to skip. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> we didn't sand these particular tiles. What do you mean we? Oh, I. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Tim added an extra bit of whistle height so we could see what that looked like and sand it, and you can really tell it's got a very really different texture. Makes a big difference for the adhesion of the of the sand as well. I, I think the average person could accomplish exactly what we did easily. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, this is arguably the first time I've really made terrain, you know, and I did the dungeon half of this, so I'm pretty happy with how it came out. So, and you yeah. can do a lot with styrofoam. I've got a piece here. This is just styrofoam and a few laser bits up top, but with with a little bit of uh, texture and height variation, like yeah. this is just styrofoam. Yeah, um, uh, the, the detail on that brick, I'll get some close-up shots to show you, but the detail on that brickwork is insane. So, I mean, we've we've arguably rushed the, this dungeon build today, really, to try and get it done in a day to show off the video. Um, it just sort of shows you that with you know a little bit more time and finesse, you can you can get some really fantastic results. Not not that this isn't good. I I I play this. I'd be I'd be happy. Uh, working okay. my way through this this null uh, null cave that we've set up here. Uh, where can they find those awesome null miniatures? They're pretty Tim? cool, aren't they? <laughs> These are our chamber miniatures that we're now printing. Um, you can find new miniatures every month. Yeah, and they're available on the website right now. Cool. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and all that jazz. Say bye, Tim. Bye, Tim.